Good morning, my friends. Grim here. I hope all is well, and welcome to Perusing Premodern Number 6, this one featuring three deuce, which is basically a red-green aggro deck that I refer to as Utility Zoo. It's kind of like Zoo in, like, 2015-era modern in that you're playing under-costed threats, your plan is to turn them sideways, you've got some burn for backup, but in this case... Almost all of the creatures have really relevant activated abilities that let you turn into a control deck or let you play a little bit more casually, hence the nickname Utility Zoo. Uh, the deck's real name is also kind of a nickname for those confused, because I had no idea what Three Deuce meant. Uh, it apparently, according to my Google search, refers to Dwarven Miner, who is a 1-2, with a Ranker strapped on his back, making him a 3-2. And that kind of sums up the whole deck, because Dwarven Miner, of course, is an extremely utility-oriented card that can technically turn sideways, but really you'd never play a 1-2-for-2 two two with that as the primary purpose. The activate activated ability of a repeated Wasteland is actually the purpose, and or I guess Dust Bowl is more accurate, whatever. And Ranker, of course, allows him to be a lot more aggressive when turning sideways, so that little um, moniker kind of sums up the deck as a whole. But we'll go through a more thorough deck tech shortly, followed by three matches. Shout out to the guys who participated Participated. We had Bobby, Dan, and Fjord here. Bobby and Dan were blind opponents. That is a change from the usual where we kind of coordinate, all right, somebody plays a mid-range deck, somebody plays a control deck, yada, yada. Um, Fjord, I did know he was going to be on his specific deck because he had to borrow the cards from me. Otherwise, it's all blind. The structure of the list, totally blind. And uh, thank you once again to the participants. Thank you for viewing. Thanks to, above all, to all Patreon supporters it means a lot to me. Now let's get into the deck tech for three deuce. All right, friends. So the first thing I should mention is that roughly half of the three deuce lists you'll see out there are actually Naya colored. They're splashing white for a wide variety of things. You know, there's white threats. There's great white sideboard cards. There are sorts to plowshares. There's also some interesting tech like Wax and Wayne. That gives you a main deck card, kind of like our main deck naturalizes here, that is not dead when you don't need to destroy an enchantment. So there's lots of good reasons to splash white. There's also lots of good reasons, especially in a format like this with really poor mana bases relative to something like modern, to stay clean and two-colored. That's what we're doing here. So beginning with that mana base, we've got Onslaught basic lands to the tune of 12 total, Eight mountains, four forests, and I thought Onslaught just really fit the theme here, both visually and in terms of the name of the set. Carpluse and Forest and Wooded Foothills for mana fixing. Wooded Foothills, of course, also adding to the graveyard for the Lava Man and Four of Treetop Village, absolute all-star of the format. Where does it fit better than in a deck like this? So, as you can see, our curve here is super low. We do have 24 lands because, again, we want to kind of curve out. We want to sink mana into treetop villages. But we our curve, besides Blastoderm, tops off at 2, at least main deck. So it's lean and mean, but we have a lot of activated abilities that are mana sinks. And we don't want to slow our clock, right? It's kind of like how Burn wants to make a land drop every turn until you're dead. And it's less worried about flooding in the long game. Same energy here. And again, we have Treetop and other things as a mana sink in the event. But moving on to the threat suite, Mog Fanatic times four, Grim Lava Man, so times four. Lava Man is one of the highest card quality um, options that we have access to in these colors in an aggressive deck period. He even sees playing a ton of mid-range decks, right? It's just a really powerful card relative to the format. Mog Fanatic fits the theme really nicely. I don't know that this is a guaranteed necessary four of, but certainly it's one of the better cards we have access to in this strategy. Lightning Bolt times four. Needs no introduction. Three copies of Firebolt. This, again, does a little bit of everything. This is kind of a utility zoo spell, as opposed to the utility do zoo threats, in that you don't feel as bad firing it off to face early game, because you know that if you're in a matchup where you're not sure whether you'll need more removal later, you always have flashback as a potential way to do that. But Curse Scroll is really the late game option. You're guaranteeing two per turn when everybody's in top deck mode just about. And of course, it's 
board control in a really serious way if you need it to be. Only three of just because it's a little bit clunky early game and a little bit clunky in multiples as well in most cases, but my goodness, is this card powerful. We already talked about Dwarven Miner and Ranker. So Ranker, of course, is a bit of a recurring nightmare, uh, so to speak, for the opposition in that if all they have is creature removal and you've got a wide board of weenies, Ranker is just going to keep coming back. This is another mana sink of sorts in that it's coming back to your hand, you're recasting it, it just can't get rid of it uh, for most people just pointing spells at the board. Dwarven Miner gives us a little bit of hope against opposing um, greedy land bases. Just against, um, you know, if you're on the front foot, you want to play a little bit more of a tempo game, just hitting their dual end, whatever the case may be. Again, utility insofar as you can turn them sideways, you can suit them up with a ranker, or you can ride that destroy target non-basic land train to victory. River Boa. This innocuous little card is actually pretty strong in the meta, I would say. Uh, you cover yourself pretty well between Island Walk and Regenerate. It's a two power threat for two. It's definitely got some surprisingly powerful use cases. And if it's not relevant um, insofar as Island Walk and Regen is concerned, well, it is just another threat that goes wide and is at a decent rate. Wild Mongrel is only a three of because again, diminishing returns and multiples, but when you discard a card, you're pumping it, you're fueling Grim Lava Mancer, you're maybe getting something with flashback into the bin depending on the situation. It's just another form of flood insurance as well. And perhaps more importantly than anything else, it's a really good combat trick. Becoming the color of your choice until end of turn is delightful on MTGO when you turn the dog white or black or blue or whatever you want, and also just very relevant in a format like this with a lot of old cards that do care about the color of the opposing cards one way or another. I mentioned the two of Naturalize. Of course, in a deck that's aggro-facing, it's not ideal to have the potentially dead draw of Naturalize, but that's just another reason a Wild Mongrel is good as a discard outlet for those potentially dead cards, and this is a nod to the format as a whole. Naturalize, kind of a necessary evil in the main deck, most likely, unless you want to leave yourself cold to a lot of cards game one. I think it's worth throwing a couple in there most deck builders do as well and at the top end we have rock all-star blastoderm just a 5-5 with shroud for four which is insane in this format it does have fading but in this deck more than most decks we don't care that much about fading right definitely a sweet one and another thing that if you're stuck on two lands you're just trying to race another thing that can be happily discarded to wild mongrel because it is an outlier insofar as that curve is concerned. Uh, the main deck that I just went through is entirely taken from a list online that I'll link in the description. The sideboard, I just made a couple modifications. I'll begin by talking about those. Tormod's Crypt was a three of. I haven't found myself needing that much graveyard hate since I started playing, so I turned one of the crypts into a Simoon for a little bit of board control, a little bit of an out to weenies. And as with many things in this deck, you can kind of kill bigger creatures by putting a kill together by combining a few different cards or effects. Samoon plus Firebolt, Samoon plus Grim Lava Mancer, Samoon plus Mog Fanatic activation. You guys get it. Or even after blocks, a Samoon definitely can be really nice in some situations as well. Uh, but it is a one-sided sweeper type effect. We also have a... A um, little bit of a swap in color. I uh, in color hate to be clear. I took an anarchy out of the sideboard and added a compost. I think compost is just a little bit stronger overall, and I expect my opponents to be playing black more than white in our particular community. But even going into a blind tournament, I would have made that trade. And finally, sulfuric vortex. I understand why it's in here. I think it's really good in certain matchups. And I just think three might be just a tad too many for my tastes. I love Uktabi Orangutan. I think this card's really good broadly, especially in an aggressive deck like this, where you come in, you shatter the artifact, you got a 2-2 turning sideways along with the rest of the beaters. So definitely a nice fit. Everything else is from the aforementioned list. Two more naturalized for a clean playset in the 75. Two copies of Collar of the Claw against those Pyroclasm decks. And four copies of the Elemental Blast and Pyroblast split evenly two and two. 
to take care of those pesky blue mages. So there you go, my friends. That is three deuce. Again, I regard it as essentially a utility zoo deck. I think it's beautiful in its simplicity. Its strategy is about as obvious as it gets, but the play patterns are definitely more complex and more interesting than you might at first assume. So thank you for watching. Let's check out some games. All right, winning the die roll. First time playing some three deuce on the channel for you guys, and this looks like a pretty solid hand. I don't really know what else we want from a deck like this, right? It just kind of does the aggro thing. Does it pretty well, insofar as the ratio of lands to spells, the efficiency, winning the die rolls helpful. And we'll see how far it gets us. You never know. But, uh... Alright, Bobby's happy with seven. Here we go. Not enough fuel for the Lava Man, for my tastes, insofar as, like, a lack of fetch land goes and all that, but... All things considered, not a hand you can throw back, and for the first time ever on this channel, we are in the blind. Uh, in the past, we've kind of tried to craft leagues that make sense in terms of presenting a spread of opponents, so... Like, not everybody's on same or similar-ish decks. But we've done five of those now, and so we're kind of just changing it up a little bit. Hibernation Sliver. Pay two life to return this permanent to its owner's hand. Whoa. Fair enough. All right, so we can Firebolt to bounce, basically. And then play a Cursed Scroll. We're basically doing three, because that clears the way for an attack with the Lava Man, which isn't bad. It's an efficient turn, or we could just get Wild Mongrel down. Hmm. I mean, Cursed Scroll seems so good in this matchup that, like, getting it down early makes enough sense to me to, for, to make me want to make this play. I have no idea what a Sliver's deck looks like. I don't know if this is Days or whatever uh, that might be a potential concern for our scroll, but... Either way, I think Bobby told me right before we had a little chat that he had a spicy one for us. He was not lying. All slivers have shroud. What? That's really good. That's just really, really good. Oh, but all Grim Lava Mancers have rancor. Let's go. That's pretty cool. Still think I'm probably supposed to play Wild Mongrel at this point. Crystalline Sliver changes our whole style in a very significant way. So yeah, we're just going to play the Mongrel Sago. Guess technically we can turn off auto yields in case there's a way that they can try to do damage to the wild mongrel. Seems unlikely, but you do never know. Muscle sliver. Oh my goodness. Whoa.
Yeah, that's pretty good. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I'm actually very tempted to take this trade. Because then we can just kind of bolt some stuff. Grim Lava Mancer Curse Scroll can take the game over. Or I guess Cursed Scroll, because we... Hmm. So I think... Oh, man. This does seem pretty awful. But I don't really see us beating the Shroud otherwise. So basically, we're getting million for one in the hopes of being able to control the game with Curse Scroll after the fact. Fair enough. Double Muscle Sliver. Yep. <clears throat> okay, well, that's a good draw. Now we have Firebolt flashback. Thran Quarry grows. Thran Quarry goes down. That was a bit of a mouthful. And the plan worked, I guess. <laughs> we know he's got the bounce one. Yeah, there it is. Hibernation sliver. And another wasteland. All right, I'm just going to make him keep bouncing this. It's tempo positive, and it does the two. And it's a good draw in and of itself. Obviously loses to Wasteland, but... Shared Triumph. Okay, fair. Mog Fanatic. I should. I believe I misspoke. We don't have the mana quite yet for Firebolt, but we have. We're working toward it. I was kindly informed by one person in our community, I believe it was Dan, that you can actually click on the card in your hand with Curse Scroll rather than typing it in. Very convenient. Win together, die alone. So we are seeing at least four color slivers because the one that he keeps bouncing is blue-black, I believe, and there's bant cards visible. Yep. Hibernation sliver into metallic sliver. Fair enough. Ooh, naturalize? Okay. Hmm. I don't think the odds of him playing permission are very high. But again, I've never seen a sliver list. Never looked at one. I do know they exist. Hmm. 
So one possibility is firing up Treetop Village on defense and then using Naturalize, and that might be enough of an upside to, well, not not really with Wasteland, I guess, but I still think we're just supposed to say go here. Maybe react to his play, whatever it might be if he main phases anything. I'm used to these types of decks being Aether Vile decks, which is not uh, <laughs> not the case here, right? I think I'm just going to curse scroll here. It's slightly more mana efficient. And we don't have to reveal this, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. All right, I kind of learned something new there with that. That's how I thought it would work, but I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, that's a good move to Wasteland our treetop before we get to untap. And another metallic sliver. Fair enough. Yep, that Wasteland hurts a bit. Just hope to draw something low curve or, you know, more lands is fine. Yeah, sure. We might now really have to hit that shared triumph. Not even sure this is worth it, so we basically save two, we make him take two to save it. I guess it's worth it. He just lets it happen, huh? Yeah, that makes it worth it for sure. Wonder what's in his hand. Vindicate on the Cursed Scroll. That's pretty bad. Okay. So we're both top decking. But he's got a board that can kind of play around removal to a more limited degree every time he does it, with the life total being such as it is. He's now considering whether to wasteland the forest. I'm glad he doesn't. We're not really rewarded for it. Except... Well, I guess Firebolt. Okay. It's still life and it's still tempo. It's just like doing two to the face, except he's got to recast it. So it, it feels weird. It feels like we're misplaying when we fire off removal at that thing. But under the circumstances, it does seem correct. And we gain two life because it's now summoning sick as well. Hmm. I'm going to hold that one in hand. Give him a chance to get a little twitchy with the Wasteland. But now that we've hit a fifth land, he's probably not likely to hit our Carpalusin Forest, right? We can draw Blasto Durham. That's our top end. And now I'm real punished, actually, 
for not playing it. I definitely didn't think of Firebolt into flashback Firebolt off the top. It is a good draw, though. So, uh, definitely could think of that one as a misplay, but I don't think it matters greatly. And for all we know, the treetop would have been wastelanded on site anyway. <laughs> Hibernation Sliver being cast for, what, the, like, seventh time this game? Kind of funny, though. Ranker is a pretty bad one. <clears throat> Without a creature. But it could become very good if we find one. Yeah, any creature in our deck we can play and immediately cast Ranker. So let's go, go, creature off the top. Or burn spell. Grim Lava Mancer, we'll take that. Little bit of a weird one in that it doesn't present lethal and Grim Lava Mancer is kind of the least natural just attacker in our deck. But if nothing else, that extra power, like the three damage rather than two, at least shuts off that fetch land. Never mind, he's got removal. Okay. Well, we're on a three turn clock here. Fascinating game. This is good old-fashioned small ball magic. And I guess fifth color confirmed because we hadn't seen fire before, if I'm not mistaken. River Boa, let's go. Gotta present lethal, I guess, but these Carpoos and Forests are kind of killing us a little bit. So if he has another fire, we're actually pretty screwed. Because then if we tap to regen... Okay, he doesn't. Or maybe he still does, we'll see. But if we tap to regen and he tags us for one, we're dead on board. But he's dead on board because we have Island Walk and 4 power. So it's coming right down to it, my friends. If he has Ice, he could tap it down. Lots could happen here. He could have Vindicate for the Rancor, maybe. Probably wouldn't be the play, but there's just so many things that could happen. The Fetch is probably bad news for us. Shared Triumph, okay. Yep. Huh. Okay, so... I guess we're going to two. Yeah, lightning bolt, okay. GG, man. GG. That was pretty cool. <clears throat> so, Simoon seems good. It's not going to kill everything, but it's going to kill some things. For sure, those metallic slivers and who knows what else, and just maybe a combat trick as well. I don't know if there's enough blue to justify the blasts. We'll see. Um, Uptabi Orangutang's probably good as just a 2-2 two, two 
that pings a monk's diamond. And the naturalizes are decent, hitting diamond and shared triumph at least. And metallic sliver? Actually, kill spell for metallic sliver makes me a little higher on it than I would otherwise be. I don't know still if we want all four. Because, like, every card in our main deck's probably pretty good. I don't see the need for much else. Um, yeah, we don't really have bad cards in our main deck, necessarily, which makes me a little bit... Makes me wonder a little how we lost game one with a pretty decent progression, but um, maybe our progression wasn't as good as I thought. I'm not sure. Um, Dwarven Miner... They definitely play non-basics. It's a five-color deck. Like, we could attack the mana pretty hard. But he's also... I mean, we gotta cut something. I don't know what to cut. Again, everything looks fine. Tremor Ranker. Um, yeah, there's, there's like, nothing that's bad. So I'm just gonna keep the two main deck naturalizes. Trim one Dwarven Miner. For the orangutan and the simoon, I think those are pretty solid. I don't think we're going to play the blasts because the blue cards that we've seen are the shroud one, which it's great to counter, but maybe a little bit too far behind uh, against the shroud and then drawing a dead top deck, or the bounce one, which again, fine counter target, maybe just as a one of. We'll play a single red elemental blast over another ranker, because I think I can control the board better. Uh, I think I'm supposed to assume the controlling role here, basically, especially with how we've sided. All right, interesting, interesting, interesting. That was just good, fun magic. He says he didn't play that one perfectly. I didn't notice any mistakes, Bobby, but I don't know your hand, and I don't notice my own mistakes sometimes, so. <laughs> Interesting game, nevertheless. Unfortunately, we're mulling a no-lander. That sucks. And we're going to keep this really, really underwhelming two-spell hand. But River Bow is a good single threat to have, because it's very resilient. I'm just going to bottom Carplus and Forest. I hope it's good enough. He's going to Maul as well. That's really good. Ooh, he's down to five. Okay. We take those. We take those all day. I'm not sure if there's any reason not to play River Boa on curve. Strikes me that like sideboard removal might be swords to plowshares or similar. No turn one crystalline sliver, please. <laughs> That's exactly what he has. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Oh my god, that's so bad. All right, um, I'm going to make an optimistic play, and I'm going to bolt upstairs, because I don't have anything in my hand that leads me to believe that we can engineer, and of course we're flooding now, that's a big yikes, um, engineer the same type of trade that we were able to get rid of the Crystalline Sliver with last game. So I'm basically just being mana efficient in the hopes that I draw gas and can keep racing and keep regenerating River Boa. Which right now we have Island Walk. We obviously couldn't regen there. Hey, there's another one. Let's go. That's an amazing draw. 
River Boa OP. Island walk regenerate. What a what a keyword pairing. No, they're flying now. What the? <laughs> okay, this is going to be a less interactive game than the last one, that's for sure. Gasoline blastoderm. That's hype, dude. We're drawn pretty well. Not going to lie. Okay, thankfully there is no muscle sliver main phase or at all, because he would have main phased it clearly. But will there be lethal on field? There is lethal on field. Okay, so we need to draw a burn spell. We don't. But I'm going to sit here as though I have one. We're going to price him into a scared block on the Blastoderm. And he's going to lose his 3-3. He's not going to have a Muscle Sliver. Which I guess wouldn't be lethal anyway. But he's not going to have it anyway. And it's going to be fine. We're going to win. <laughs> okay, so we tank for a little while longer yet. Shroud Flying. I guess Shroud and Flying is better than Island Walk and Regenerate, huh? Okay, so I'm really doing the math here, guys. Gotta gotta make sure the math is on point for our burn spell victory. GG's well played. Good games, but uh yeah. Oof, so close, yet so far. Seems like kind of a decent matchup for us, but then again, maybe not with Shroud and Flying. That was a nice display from five color slivers. Good times. All right, we're playing a little three deuce in the blind against Dan. We'll keep a fairly well-balanced hand. It's got a little bit of everything. We're against a Shivan Reef Portent deck. Fascinating. Okay. What this means, I do not know. We need double green for Blastoderm in a deck like this, so I think I'm, if I don't draw anything that makes me want to play differently, I'm just going to play Mountain Pass. Treetop Village, all right, we'll get that down. I take it all back. So the fact that he led on Shivan Reef is interesting. Obviously taking damage right away. If we could stick a Dwarven Miner, <laughs> we could start going to work on the lands if we can draw and resolve and have it not die. Um, more realistically, I think we can just hope that the incremental damage adds up. It works to our advantage. Neither of us knows what the other one is on, although in my previous three-deuce game against Bobby, uh, Dan might have spectated it, so he might guess that that's what we're on. I'm not sure. But we're going island into another portent. That's a very beautiful island. I don't know what to make of blue-red necessarily, the decks that I've seen. Um, the solution, of course, playing white as well. I've seen blue-red combo decks like Trix and Stifle Nut. That's about all I, I know of at the moment. Let's 
Let's play a wild mongrel. We can be as aggressive as possible this way. If he bolts it, I was going to say, I'm not sure what we'll do. Might be the solution indeed. <clears throat> Blasted room. Well, well, well. Obviously, if we had a dual land to hold up either regen or a lightning bolt, that would be ideal here. If we're just going to kind of play Blasty on curve, then there is an argument to going River Boa into Firebolt and just putting as much pressure down as possible. But I think I'm going to play it a little bit more cagely and hold up regen. All right, it's getting countered anyway. We played around days, but not Mana Leak that way. Um, so a bit of a missed opportunity to sequence slightly better against Mana Leak with a held up Lightning Bolt here. But it does look like it might be the solution, in which case, like, a Lightning Angel doesn't get killed by a Lightning Bolt. So I don't think we're missing out on too much besides maybe a little bit of potential efficiency if we were going to bolt upstairs. But... Dan tanking a little bit here. One of the cooler features of Magic Online is when Wild Mongrel changes colors. We'll see. We'll see if that happens this time. I think with some hands in this deck, you really do want to dump it out aggressively. I'm not sure this is one of them. Not sure we're just supposed to jam Blastoderm either. Like, he could just be holding up fact or fiction. Grim Lava Mancer beats another Mana Leak and is a problem card for him in and of itself. And I think he has some tension between a threat and permission. So, for that reason, I'm going to hold off on Blastoderm. I'll try the Lava Man. See what happens. All right, we're just passing, holding up bolts. And naturalize. I don't think naturalize is going to have any targets if he is indeed on the solution, which sure looks like it. Mm-hmm. Okay. What the heck. Impulse and prohibit. Swords to Plowshares and Rockavolver? This is a new one. Whoa. Kicker. Enters the battlefield with. So you can't... The, those counters don't go on the stack, it seems. I want him to pick the Rock Evolver pile, though, because we do have an out to that. So I'm going to put that there first and then tank a little bit. And then we're going to end up doing this.
All right, he takes the reactive hand, which is probably what I didn't want him to take, but I'm happy enough with that outcome anyway. I mean, with that group of five, we're not really coming out ahead no matter what. We could go for the good old-fashioned put everything in one pile and hope he mis misclick strategy, but that is not, not likely. I don't think we're that far behind that we need to do that, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Flying Vigilance Haste. All right. <clears throat> so we could bolt upstairs for mana efficiency. Because in theory, we're killing the Lightning Angel with like Firebolt plus Grim Lava Mancer. But I think we're going to hold the bolt for a, for a future use case. Dwarven Miner is a fascinating one, but of course we're kind of screwed on red. I honestly think we might just supposed to be play be playing Blastoderm while the coast is clear. That card's real good here. And it's not clear from days, exactly. But doesn't look like a day's deck necessarily. Other other options are to get Dwarven Miner down, do the Firebolt and Grim Lava Mancer thing. It's it's all pretty good. Oh, well, sorry, no, no, no. We can't get the Dwarven Miner down. We needed to draw a land for Treetop Village or a red land for multiple spells to make that better. Alright, let's just begin here. All right, he is blocking. So I think discarding the naturalize is free enough that I'm going to do it. And that makes me want to go more all in. And we'll go with a firebolt or a dwarven miner to the bin. I guess a firebolt. No days. Nice. Didn't use the Lava Man effectively and haven't really used him effectively yet. But unless there's a Wrath of God coming, I feel really happy about getting the Blastoderm down. Exalted Angel, maybe? Yep. All right, Lava Man plus Lightning Bolt is going to take care of that. All right, four or five life link, effectively. Probably played unnecessarily into the Wrath there. But as far as I can tell, unless he draws planes, he'll need to put himself in treetop village range to cast it anyway. Maybe just discarding the Wild Mongrel, though, would have been better. Hmm. Okay, well, that makes it easy. 
you can attack into that anyway because this goes on the stack. But let's just go to game two. All right, a strong curve out from our deck. Uh, Blastoderm, beefy enough to get us over the line. Turn that corner. Lots of relevant stuff going on. Uh, Sulfuric Vortex, I think, is partially in here to face control decks, but against the solution, it's actually nowhere near as free as it is against, like, any other control deck I've seen. Uh, we gotta get these Naturalizes out of there, though. And we're just gonna play the Blasts and Vortexes, like, a secondary thing. Um... We're not really going to worry too much about the graveyard until we see reasons to. I think I want to try to play the Dwarven Miner game if possible, so... Let's just get rid of a couple, like, Firebolts or Mog Fanatics... Maybe one of each. Firebolts being less impressive in multiples, just because it's too slow to realistically get it all online. Yeah, yeah, I think we're still supposed to play Sulfuric Vortex. I'm going to cut maybe a couple of Rankers as well. feel good about having four Red Blasts or Red Blast variants, effectively, to bring in. The other question is, do we want to play, like, Collar of the Claw against a Pyroclasm? I mean, how bad really is Pyroclasm? It can be definitely bad, especially on the draw, when we might not be able to regen River Boa. Let's, let's get one in here at the expense of something that dies to it. Or at the expense of just card quality, like Mog Fanatic, relatively low card quality. Alright, I like that well enough. We do seem to have raised our curve, um, but like the... To, to a degree, that's fine against control. We are a 24 land deck, and uh, obviously the Red Blasts are some of the most impactful interaction we have, and they're nice and low curve instant speed, so... Hopefully we haven't gone overboard in that regard. Just saw that he said GG, GG well played. Uh, we'll keep. And... Treetop Village is great, generally in the deck. Good in the matchup. Not really good with our opening hand. But we'll play it anyway. It is a pretty intense opening hand, though. Just gotta, gotta draw a red land and we'll be firing. We draw a green land, okay. It's actually real bad. It's real bad. We'll try for the Lava Man. Obviously, we're feeling so much better if we can cast more than one spell per turn with a hand like this. I still think a Red Land is our best draw for next turn. Circle of Protection Red. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Well, we can either pass holding up a Red Blast, or we can attack with Treetop, and in the face of Circle of Protection Red, we better attack with Treetop. And with the Lava Man, just to force him to use that mana. That card's beatable with our hand, for sure, but we do need a Red Land ASAP. It makes our Vortexes real awkward, though. I wonder if it's wise in Game 3 now that we've seen that. 
to consider trimming a vortex for a naturalize, bring one back in. I don't know that we, like, need to respect Circle all that hard, but in this particular case... Oh, Dwarven Miner. Again, the lack of red mana is just kicking our butts here. But he didn't make a fourth land drop, so I think I'm supposed to try to stick the miner here. Oh, imagine if we were just able to use these red blasts. If we force him to, like, mana leak or something, okay. Either doesn't have it or he didn't want to. <clears throat> it's gonna say it's gonna cost him two life. One to tap Shivan Reef and one to not activate Circle of Protection Red. He could have a uh, Swords to Plowshares here. Very possible. Deciding between the Lava Man and the Miner. Yep. Just nothing, huh? No COP activation. Holding up a mana leak? I don't know. I think you would have to mana leak the Dwarven Miner if you're land screwed, right? Unless, again, he's waiting to see if he can find a plow or maybe draw a bolt so he doesn't have to plow. Something like that. Cursed Totem. Well, that explains it. Spice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not gonna lie. So now we've just got a few dorks. Not really up to much. I think I'm holding up Red Blast just to, like, counter a Lightning Angel or something here. Curse Scroll is an interesting one. We gotta go for it, guys. Treetop Village is our only hope. <laughs> Plowing the treetop. Yeah, that sucks. Alright, I'm going to fire bolts. No, I'm not, because Reflecting Pool. Um, it's either Curse Scroll or Red Blast held up again. I think we're going to just cast a spell. This could definitely get us over the line in a long game. <clears throat> Lots of spicy hate pieces over there. Curse Totem is not one I expected, or like to see for that matter. And if it is Lightning Angel or something, you know, obviously we can just kill it with a Red Blast when it sticks. If it sticks. <sighs> Still no other Red Source. Oh my god. Alright. He's not exactly flush with mana either, though. Taken two, nice. All right, I'm just saying go here, right? Yep, I'm just saying go. Red Blast the Factor Fiction. River Boa. It's a good one. P 
potentially. We give away the game a little bit here by not holding up regen, but... Nope, that's a bad play. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Very disciplined with the bolt. I thought the likelihood of bolt was always there, but... Alright, Hydro Blast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire the Lightning Bolt here. I think that's a good time to take him to five. Remember that, like, getting cards out of, out of our hand makes Cursed Scroll better. Yeah, it seems like if Dan had, like, just a, a fifth land, maybe things would be going a lot more swimmingly for him. It's so funny that we've been operating on one red source with this land for so long. And right on cue, there's another land, and it is green. So he's playing what must certainly be, I imagine, an Exalted Angel for the morph cost. So we don't really have a great play here. We could... Slightly increase the odds of Curse Scroll hitting by, like, playing a Firebolt into his Circle of Protection. I don't think that's correct. So, uh, And if we get lucky with the 2 out of 5 chance then we should main phase it like if we were if we knew we were going to get lucky we'd main phase it but instead i'm just going to say go and try to do it in response to the morph at some point cuz i th <sighs> that might have been bad but i think the pressure is on him to morph like proactively to get out of this low life total Because if, like, he passes, we scroll him, he morphs in a response, like, we can just, like, untap and kill him if, like, the scrolls hit. And not that they will, the odds aren't good for that, but it is an incentive, right? Okay, going for the portent. I'll allow it. Again, there is a temptation to just kind of red blast like all many things. I don't, I don't think that's one of them, but
Oh, I'm sorry. Activated ability. He's hosing his own angel. I didn't notice that. Not gonna lie. I guess we'll just hit it anyway. If we can. Nice, it worked. Okay. Should have main phased it, but we'll take it. Alright, there's another red land. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I should have noticed that right away. Cards I'm not used to playing with at all. Still new to the format, but even within the format, I haven't seen anyone curse totem me yet, which is very cool. We're obviously giving him a real decision here. Sulfuric Vortex just attacks him by one mana every time is <laughs> kind of tempting. Obviously, he's got the beating of that with Circle of Protection. But uh, I think Dwarven Miner is better for a couple different reasons here. It, too, is a clock. It is not symmetrical, and we can continue and indeed exacerbate his mana woes potentially yep Very rude plowing of the dwarf. All right, he's got a fifth land. Go, go, Sulfuric Vortex. We did it. Oh, my goodness. Getting lucky, my friends. Getting lucky. We still cannot play Vortex and hold up Red Blast, and Vortex is actually better to keep in hand for the purposes of scroll, right? So I'm going to play Wild Mongrel here. But there is an argument to just pass holding up scroll activation and red blast. If he's got a mana leak, I may just pay for it. He doesn't. All right. Fascinating game. And nothing. I'm really curious as to his hand. There's land number six. Obviously, he doesn't want to see it in the form of a fetch land, if at all. But he's going for it. Going for something. If 
It's just like a hard cast exalted angel. We'll just beat him with a firebolt. Rock Evolver. All right, let's see what this does again. With Kicker. Enters the battlefield with plus one, plus one counters, and when it deals damage, you gain life. Pretty cool, but... Let's go for that Curse Scroll kill, because Scroll has earned it. Third time lucky, nah, Red Blast. But as mentioned, we do have the Firebolt. He's got one land up, though. There's another scroll, okay. Hmm. Well, with the attacks, this should be lethal, right? Let's just do the obvious thing. Squeaking over the line with the Lava Man repeatedly chipping in for one, apparently. Great games, Dan. Um... GG is well played. Yeah, that was super intense. Beating a COP red when we're on the draw. Definitely not easy. Cursed Totem made our lives a lot harder. I think he was stuck on four lands for too long. Um, yeah, just had a, a moment where I forgot all about the pre-lifelink days. But it's fine. But it's fine. We do it. GG is well played. Oh, uh, I tried to beat Fjord to the sup, and the sup beat me. Well, I guess that's only fair. We're going to win the die roll, take the play. And so I know we're against a machine head deck, where I think the naturalize is not going to do much, so that makes me want to consider mulling this hand. On the other hand, the amount of discard he has in the deck is totally insane. So I actually think I'm going to keep it and play around the discard a little bit because I think he's on duress rather than cabal therapy, which makes a lot of sense in a deck like that. So I'm going to lead on mountain curse scroll. Then next turn, we can go treetop village mog fanatic if we lose the naturalize to duress, and there it is. I don't think that's a big deal. Um, besides, insofar as us losing cards from the hand generally is not ideal. Um, and if you're a little confused, we did do blind matchups for the other two matches in this little mini video, but with Fjord, we're doing open lists because he had to borrow the cards from me, right? So I knew his list. It's only fair that he knows mine, right? All right. So he doesn't know about treetop village or mountain. Obviously flooding is rough. So he's representing Terminate and Lightning Bolt pretty hard. I still think I might play into it a little bit um, because, like, trading a land off is not that big a deal here. Trading a land for a spell when we're flooded is fine. If he doesn't have it, then it's great. Yep, fair enough. Not expector. All right. Ranker, huh? So we can try to have a <clears throat> now. Let's just uh, let's just try to race here. We're gonna lose the land to hypno. No big deal. We can take care of him with the curse scroll at some point. Might have like a blazing specter here. We lose our whole hand. Sure enough. Yep, that's pretty good. But again, the cards we're losing don't matter too much. 
we can kill these things with a curse scroll activation, which is amazing. I'm just glad that we're not on the uh, receiving end of a Lava Born Muse there, which is a four of in his deck as well. Might as well do this at instant speed, right? No need, no reason to do otherwise, as far as I can tell. Scroll revealing scroll, and then losing the scroll to the Hypno attack. Which does punish us for not getting quite as many lands out of our hand as we could have, perhaps. We're not doing as much to keep them in our hand as more like it. We're still in a good spot, though. Cursed Scroll, really OP. Mog Fanatic with Rancor, really OP. More like it. As it gets terminated... And now he's got a chance to get the Rancor out of our hand with a Duress. Or for us to just not have a real target for it. Phyrexian Arena? Interesting. And a land. Okay. Well, obviously that card's good, but under the circumstances, I think it might be all right. For us. <clears throat> I don't think he has a third Terminate. I don't think it's very likely anyway. So let's Rancor at Treetop Village. How about that? It's pretty cool, not going to lie. And then back to the hand. <laughs> this deck is wild, man. Three deuce. Wild Mongrel. Okay. Hmm. We go for the attack. Kind of splitting the difference between presenting lethal this turn and doing something a little bit more value positive and less vulnerable to a blowout. If we were against the... Okay, Chainer's Edict, yep. That's a card that doesn't beat Treetop, but does beat Wild Mongrel for sure. Okay, he's dead three different ways. Let's just Lightning Bolt him so we're not dragging out of the game. If we were against the combo version of Rakdos... Oh, what do we have? Okay. It's like, is there some kind of life gain? Um, if we were against the combo version, we might have felt priced into going Treetop Village Rancor again and trying to make him dead to his own Phyrexian Arena trigger. Anyway, so Phyrexian Arena is definitely one reason that the Naturalize is live. I don't know, still don't know if it's good. Still think it's, like, not a great card in your opener, generally speaking, especially because there's no turn one arena potential in his list. He's not on Dark Ritual, right? So all of these things come into play here. Um, I don't think Simoon does enough. I think it's a lot of stuff that's not Toughness 1, besides Grim Lava Mancer, basically. Not worth it. Sulfuric Vortex is a grindy card, but but he's a really aggressive deck. I'm not sure that's worth a card when it's symmetrical. Um, Collar of the Claw, you could play reactively with. You could... I don't know. I don't know that we want too much. We gotta go for Compost. 
compost pretty clear. Like, everything we're doing main deck is fine. We just probably want to consider the naturalizes and the card quality. Um, he could bring in Engineered Plague. It'd be a hoser naming Goblin or potentially Human Wizard, but he's playing Grim Lava Mancers too. Uh, it'd be good against River Boa. I think he might bring it in. Might bring in Pyroclasm. So Collar of the Claw is a lot better against Pyroclasm. I'm going to think I'm going to play with one of these. I really don't dislike anything I'm doing. I'm a little worried about Parish. To the point where, like, I think I might cut a green thread. I'm going to cut Wild Mongrel here, even though it's awesome. Because we might not have the fuel for it. And it might be counterproductive to discard. And then just cut a Mog Fanatic, because low card quality. I guess I'm going to keep about two Naturalize. I think that's probably about right. We'll see how we do. Feels like sideboarding took roughly as long as game one did. But these games are bound and determined to be quick. He's keeping seven. I mean, I'm going to keep seven. But it's a very unbalanced hand with two ranker and only one creature. T1 duress. Yeah, down goes Cursed Scroll pretty easily. And if we lose our Lava Man, our hand doesn't do much. But we have drawn Lightning Bolt, which is obviously very good in this matchup. Chainer's Edict. You got it, buddy. Wild Mongrel. Yeah. And pass, huh? All right, well, I say we just go for it. We could try to be cute and play around lightning bolts. But we lose to terminate into other removals so hard and... Depending on the sequencing, we probably lose the lightning bolt anyway, so let's just uh let's just go all in. I do not think I'll be pitching my mountain for another point of damage though. It's too good to draw Blastoderm. Yeah, we got terminated. Alright, fair enough. All right, we'll want to see him tap out for, like, a Blazing Spectre here, or a Hypno. Yep. Yep, Lightning Bolt really, really good here. Well, let's try to draw another threat and keep the trades off trade-offs going. We don't quite get there. And when I say quite, I mean not even close. Carplusen Forest. What do I need that for? Phyrexian Arena. See, here it's really scary. He's at 20 life, and we have no board state. Well, I take it back. We need this Carpluson Forest to cast a Firebolt with Flashback. That'll show him. That'll show him for trying to draw cards and lose life. Ew, Lava Born Muse. That's frightening. All right, we need a threat. Or we need to bolt pretty badly here. We don't get either. But in Cursed Scroll, like, playing it makes our turn so inefficient. Oh, no, it doesn't. I, obviously, we can just activate it. It's actually very good. That's good all around. We 
We're still up against it here between the Muse and the Arena, but... Alright, so no hasty threat. Another Muse, oh my goodness. Sorry about the stomping, if you can hear that upstairs. My kids are going a little, a little crazy at the moment. Taken six from the muses. <laughs> okay. Mog fanatic. That is nice. Very nice, in fact. So we can... Play Fanatic. Give it a ranker just for fun. And then a couple different ways we can make a trade. <laughs> I was talking up Lava Born Muse. I just think it's a really cool card. And now it is the death of me. <clears throat> If I'm not mistaken, I think, well, whatever. It really doesn't matter. But if he attacked, I think we, I mean, we're not winning anyway, so whatever. Lightning bolted as well. Doesn't matter. Had us beaten a million different ways. All right, cool. Lava Born Muse OP. Um, yeah. I don't see any reason to change our sideboarding based on that. I think what we have coming in and out is about right. Um, actually, Dwarven Miner might be lower card quality than Wild Mongrel. I'll make that swap, and then maybe... Maybe even we'd get rid of both. We have not seen any utility lands, just kind of fetches, basics, and duels. So yeah, let's go off the minor plan. Um, so coming in could be a second Collar of the Claw, a third Naturalize, or bring back the Mog Fanatic, or perhaps a Sulfuric Vortex on the play... I don't really, still don't really think Vortex is the way to go at all. Yeah, Lava Born Muse is a house, my friend. It's undeniable. Undeniable. I'm just going to put the Mog Fanatic back in. Oh, God. <laughs> Solid enough hand minus the fact that it's a four lander with no red production, but with two treetop villages. I actually think I'm supposed to keep this and hope for the best. Basically, there are so few dead draws from here um, because any red land is fire. Um, and most of our remaining threats are green. But, yeah, it's definitely awkward.
There it is. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm actually going to play out the Mog Fanatic rather than the Lava Man. He kept seven again. It's been duress turn one every game and terminate turn two every game. So let's not play into the terminate this time. Oh, okay. I guess we'll see what we draw, but we're probably killing that guy. Naturalize, huh? Interesting. I wonder if he's... I still think we're definitely... We definitely have to do it anyway, but I wonder if he's wanting the trade with Fnatic for Lava Mancer and then us to play our Lava Mancer and he gets it with an Engineered Plague. That's definitely a possible line, but I still think we're supposed to make that play. It's just uh, a way we could get blown out. He, he's so into it that he takes the trade straight up. Yeah, interesting. <sighs> okay, I'm still going to make the play because at least then we'll get to naturalize it. Like, I don't I don't want another, I don't want to like lose the naturalized to duress, for example, if we don't give him this play. And it is just one of many possible things. And as I was about to say, he could just play a hypnotic specter and we really need to kill that. And that's what he does. Okay, so no plague. Let's go. All right, I guess it's better overall to bolt the Spectre, because then we get to attack for four rather than zero. Definitely relevant when we have two treetops on the field to go ahead and get on the front foot. Could definitely have another 2-2 in hand. Just kind of waiting for the opportune time. No, it's the Lava Born Muse, our arch nemesis. Definitely a scary one, but Firebolt's a good draw here. Really living up to the Utility Zoo name here. So many activated abilities and everything working together pretty synergistically. We're still a few cards down against the mid-range deck with high card quality, though. And another Lava Born Muse. Oh, no. It's happening again. It's happening again. Hmm. If 
our graveyard was a little little fuller. And by a little, I mean one card. Like if we would just drawn a fetch land, we could flashback fire bolts to kill the muse and then ping her with the lava man again. We're just basically trying to win the race, guys. Now, the dream would have been if they'd given us some kind of naturalized target main phase like Phyrexian Arena. So do we block and ping losing the fireball? Yeah, we've got to, right? Got the bolt. Fair enough. Yep. Nice, nice. Okay. I mean, that bolt would have been devastating no matter what. But it's pretty bad, don't get me wrong. So the idea here is we're going to jump block with Mog Fanatic, then ping to put him to three, and dead to Treetop Village. Unless, obviously, he hangs back. Oh, G2 Encampment. Man, this is coming right down to the wire, huh? And don't get me wrong, hanging back with Lava Born Muse is fine, because she pings us for three, like in a general conceptual sense. Alright. <clears throat> Ooh, another treetop. Okay. So, hopefully he has nothing. Well, what if, if he has nothing, are we still dead? So, let's say he has nothing. He's going to have to block with... Spectre, he'll take one. We're dead to the Muse trigger, the Muse attack, and the G2 encampment. If we stay back, we are dead to the all out attack. But he might not make the all out attack without knowing the last card in our hand. So I guess we tra play Treetop Village and stay back, and it looks like we're dead if he just goes for it. It is definitely risky to go for it, though. I guess I'm really glad I never brought in a third naturalize. It is, you know, any other spell here, and it feels like we could win, right? Okay, he sits back, though. Um, so we're going to lose the naturalize. And we're dead to a bolt. with the trigger, but it gives us a chance to draw a bolt. G's got it. GG is well played, man. 
Those were about as close as it gets. All three games. Definitely very cool. And Lava Born Muse with a coup de gras. We are about to draw. Ah, oh, that never works for me. Oh well. GG's well played. Well, there you go, my friends. Thank you very much for watching our three matches with three deuce, funnily enough. And um, yeah, definitely some great ones, if you ask me. We had a mixed bag of results, but more or less every game was close, and the matches as a whole were close as well. Many of them decided by the thinnest of margins. And with a deck like this, it's good, honest magic. It's interesting. It's not anything that's really going to be a thorn in the side of, of people or a real bugbear for them or they really hate playing against this type of, type of archetype. No, it's just good, honest magic with many interesting decision points for both players while being beautiful in its simplicity. That's how I regard it. I had a great time. Uh, thanks again to our opponents. Thank you out there for watching. Thanks again to all patrons um, of the channel, of course. And um, just to briefly review, we have a uh, very long loss game one against Slivers, where if we had drawn a, just a little bit higher density of gas or maybe things in the right order, we could have gotten there uh, about as close as it gets, though, right? And then in game two, another real close one, but a totally different, um, you know, totally different speed and dynamic of the game where we're just kind of two ships in the night both racing and that shows that this deck again can race when need be can play the long game when need be can pivot into the control when need be uh we didn't happen to get there but it was very very close in round two against the solution we did get there and that is good because it puts three deuce on the board but it also continues kind of the running meme in our community that the solution it's not actually a solution to anything, right? Um, obviously, the deck is legit. The deck is at least decent. But for whatever reason, it's just the unlucky deck in our community where whoever picks it up, however they configure it, whatever they're playing against, the solution never seems to get over the line against anybody. However, at the time of this recording, I can confirm that Dan has put solution on the map with a win against a non-functional Fires of Yavamaya deck I was trying out um, that just kind of didn't really do its thing, and, and the solution had all the answers, had all the solutions, if you will. So, uh, duck broken, the solution now going to go on a tear through our community, I'm sure. But here, Three Deuce uh, gets over the line against it, and again, what were some very interesting games that did show many decision points and quite a strong ability of this zoo-like deck to play a long game with the best of them. And then against Fjord, uh, it's got like the mid-range aspect versus the aggro aspect, but both decks relying heavily on red, so we've got bolts flying in both directions overhead. Removal lineup lining up fantastically for both players, so creatures were on notice that it was definitely going to be a tough, uh, a tough ask for them to see the end of the day, but we definitely had some great close games there as well. Fjord just squeaking over the line against good old three deuce and, um, I couldn't be happier about playing an honest deck in an honest format like pre-modern. Good time. So thanks again to those guys. Thank you again for watching. As far as running it back, I probably wouldn't do too much off the top of my head. Didn't really get to see the Dwarven Miner thing do too much for us, but that's okay. Again, his floor is decent because he is still a body that can be rankered or any number of other things. And um, of course, gives the deck a much needed dimension in matchups where his activated ability is relevant. If you wanted to totally leave yourself cold game one, I could see turning Dwarven Miner and Naturalize into other more aggressive cards and just going for the throat game one. But if you're going to do that, I think Sly is probably a better way to do it, right? So I like maintaining the utility and maintaining the outs and maintaining the ability to play the long game. Otherwise, I'm not sure what you're doing is really what you should be doing. As far as the sideboard goes, I'm happy with the modifications I made. They didn't really come up, but I think structurally they are sound. Didn't really miss too much the things that we cut either. So yeah, I'd be happy enough to run it back, but I'd also be happy enough to take any suggestions that you guys have for this archetype. So leave those in the comments below. And I hope to see you next time where we might change up the format of perusing pre-modern, at least at least as a one or two off 
at least temporarily. Stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you then.